very important concept in mathematics is called integral. What I will talk about here is the definite integral, which is the area from x equal a to x equal b under the graph of a function, the y equals fx. The positive area is the gray part and the negative area is the red part, and that's measured with relation to the x-axis, which has the equation y equals zero. So positive uh, contributions are gray and negative contributions are red here. We will take a look here at how an integral is actually defined, and this is a type of integral which is called a Riemann integral, after another famous mathematician called Bernard Riemann, who lived in the middle of the 1800s. The idea with an integral is that you are creating a limit where you are adding an increasing number of parts that are becoming smaller and smaller. And in the limit you have an infinite sum of infinitely small parts. And that's another indeterminate expression which can become anything. In order to figure out what it actually becomes, we can look at what is called an undersum and an oversum. And uh, basically we are dividing the, the, the interval of integration, as we see here, into a number of sub-intervals. And then we are looking for the smallest number that the function takes inside the interval. That's called f min and the largest number. So you're looking for the smallest value and the largest value that the function takes on each interval. And then you're adding these numbers up and multiplying them with, with the uh, length of the interval. That's what we see here, f min times delta x, sum to n parts, and the n is, is the number of intervals we are working with. And uh, the max, the oversum, is the same thing with the maximum value. Now, if we're looking for the idea of the integral is, in this case, to measure the area under the function, under the function curve, or the graph of the function, as it's actually called, in this interval. And it's obvious from the figure that the undersum will be smaller than that value, because we are always staying underneath the value of the function, and the oversum is always going to be larger, or at least as large as the number we're looking for. And the idea of the integral then is that we are slicing thinner and thinner and doing this thing and approaching a limit. And if the oversum and the undersum approaches the same value, then we have boxed in the integral between these values and that common limit is called the integral of the function over this interval. And this is written as we see here, as the, this strange uh, stylized S thing, that's the integral sign. 